Hello everybody and welcome to Uprising. I want to talk about the gut today. I'm Hydrogen Man obviously and everything's about hydrogen and now we're learning that the gut has so much to do with hydrogen. Of course our body naturally makes hydrogen. Now the things that actually appear to be increasing our natural amount of hydrogen are basically fiber but not just any fiber. Fiber that comes from fruits, vegetables, things like oatmeal, things like quinoa, brown rice, these type of things. Now what's really being understood now is that there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria in the gut and this is really exciting to me because it actually begins to show with science things that I had already believed were good for me which are the fruits the vegetables and these types of nuts seeds grains and what they are showing also is I've had a lot of people argue with me as far as like you know meat is good for you dairy is good for you but what they're showing is that when you eat these things they're actually feeding the bad gut bacteria in your gut and so I actually have some theories about it maybe there's no science yet but this is my theory about the whole thing is that if we take something like a cow that eats a bunch of grass and it's eating all this grass and its body's probably uh, producing not only the hydrogen but hydrogen and the gut bacteria are able to produce things like amino acids like proteins they're able to make certain vitamins on their own which is really exciting so they make all this stuff it goes into their meat and then we eat the meat so yeah we get the nutrients but there's a lot of other bad stuff that's going to come with it where on our own if we were to eat the proper foods then we would also have the good bacteria like again the fruits and the vegetables and fermented foods and this type of stuff and we could produce our own good gut bacteria that can also create all these like amino acids again or um, uh, other nutrients that our body really needs and we have this you know proliferation of good gut bacteria now in regards to hydrogen it appears that these gut bacteria produce hydrogen also in our body so we get a natural production so then why is even hydrogen or even uh, supplementing hydrogen important well because the science shows that the gut bacteria we we're not producing as much hydrogen as we get older it just seems to happen for whatever reason we have a certain limit as far as our lifespan and our lifespan apparently appears to be linked to our gut health and so if you're able to supplement which they did this with mice actually they were able to supplement hydrogen and give them larger amounts of hydrogen and they would live a healthy life for a certain period of time and maybe longer than the unhealthy mice now they would eventually still die but they would live healthy that whole time now I don't know about you but I don't mind dying at 120 years old as long as I was healthy the whole time I want quality of life more than quantity and so this can show how that could actually happen and so those are just some of the things that I think are important to understand because let's say you're a person who's like well I don't really eat healthy and I don't want to eat healthy now this happens all the time and the reason that it would be even more important for people like this to supplement with something like hydrogen and watch my other videos if you don't know much about hydrogen but something like hydrogen water is because if you're not going to have the proper environment that's producing the proper amount of hydrogen and you want to eat a lot of meat you want to have a lot of dairy products and cheeses which they're delicious don't get me wrong I agree with you they're great but I, I won't do it to myself because I value my health and I want to feel great and I mean it's even linked to you know for, for example the production of serotonin in the gut everything seems to be linked to the gut and it seems to be linked to the production of hydrogen which is why you know intaking hydrogen has all sorts of health benefits I mean crazy health benefits I'm gonna make some more videos about it too because I've had people writing me with really cool stuff and, 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 and things that I've been noticing even more with time and I'll touch on more on those later because right now we're talking about the gut one of the exciting things that I found out through my research was what can create good gut bacteria yeah I already talked a lot about it but there's one thing that specifically as far as science knows so far creates really good gut bacteria potatoes who would have thought potatoes you know I used to eat a lot of just raw food I used to be a raw foodist and you know obviously vegan but what I ended up finding out is you don't necessarily have to eat the raw food all the time I mean this is actually what the science is showing but with the potatoes you can eat them raw but there's also the research shows that you can steam or uh, bake or boil these potatoes don't fry them everything fried is unfortunately no good okay I know it tastes great but don't do it so if I, I steamed mine this is what I did today I steamed my potatoes but then you lose the benefit of the health benefit but when you let them cool down somehow the benefit is back these bonds that were separated come back together when it cools down and I have mine sitting in the fridge right now I'm gonna have my salad I'm gonna 
cut my potatoes up and put them right on my salad like that and it appears to increase all these really good gut bacteria. So who would have thought potatoes, you know, it's really great. And so that's something that you can also implement. Everything is all about the good gut bacteria, you know. And so of course the inflammatory effects of eating all the wrong things in the gut, the gut appears to be chronically inflamed. There's uh, evidence showing that it's linked to things like diabetes. It's linked to, here I wrote some stuff down, I'm trying to remember, um, oh yeah, to allergies, to asthma. If these are things that you have, if you change the environment in your gut, but it takes time. You can't just all of a sudden do it and boom, it's gonna happen in a day. You know, you really have to put in that effort and it's gonna take months because you have all this bad gut bacteria that dominates this area. And so little by little, you have to, you know, chisel away at it. Some people will do fastings and colon cleansings and um, you can drink things like apple cider vinegar and, and there's so many things you can do. But the important part is that you start implementing those fruits, those vegetables, the, the proper grains and little by little take over that territory that was taken over by the bad things that it come from like, you know, processed flour, you know, from these processed foods and, and breads and, and the meats and the dairies and all these things that really aren't helping us, even though it may seem like it does. Now, if you want to get the benefit also of, you know, there's a lot of good nutrients in like meat, for example, and people are saying, oh, you know, but you need to eat this. If you really want to get those type of benefits, again, try to use them like make a soup, right? Like a stew and use the bones and use the meat and extract the nutrients through the broth if you're going to do it that way, but then throw away the meat and throw away the bones and then just have your like, you know, your vegetables in there. And then if you even want to put some rice, I like to put rice or quinoa in my, in my soup or my stew and eat it that way. And then you can get that kind of benefit that way if you really, really want it. But so those are just some different options for different people. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. I'm really excited about it. I'm totally implementing the potato thing today. I'm going to totally put this in my salads. I'm even going to put it in my smoothies. It's kind of crazy, but it's all about the gut health. And again, don't feed the gut bacteria that is bad. Again, that comes from meat, that comes from dairy and processed breads and bleached flour and all that kind of stuff and unhealthy sugars. Limit your sugar if possible. Um, don't worry, you know, a lot of people have told me like, oh, you know, your bananas, there's too much sugar in bananas and there's too much sugar in the dates that you eat and there's too much sugar in the carrots that you eat. And I'm finding out that it actually appears that these healthy gut bacteria help you lose weight. So that's why even though I eat a lot of these things, I don't seem to gain weight. In fact, I've gotten really lean since, you know, going to this diet as compared to what I was before, which was a little chubby, <laughs> you know. And so this is really important to understand because it really has to do with the gut bacteria. They're, they're implanting gut bacteria in people who are overweight and they lose weight. So it's, don't, it's not so much about the sugar, though it is about like processed sugar. You can't put it all in the same box like, hey, it's sugar, it's sugar, and that's it. You can't do that. Because if you eat something like a raw sugar that comes from like raw honey in certain amounts, it can be really healthy for you. Whereas if you just have white processed sugar, it's not going to be as healthy for you. And even for a great idea for desserts, because I love my desserts, you can have like a sweet potato, you know, and then after you make it, you know, let it cool down and put some cinnamon on it and maybe put some, you know, raw honey on it. And wow, you got yourself a good dessert that's good for your gut. So anyway, I just wanted to share this video with you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you're liking the videos and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.